Hey, this is Andrew Brown, and in this follow along, let's take a look at how we could migrate a IPv4 VPC over to IPv6. It seems like it shouldn't be too complicated here, so we'll go ahead and create ourselves a new VPC. And uh, we'll just say, we'll just actually make a, a lot of stuff here, and we'll have it with one subnet. So we'll choose one availability zone here, and we'll say none. And the idea is that we don't want to set it with IPv6 because we want to show that migration. So we'll just say IPv6 migration. And we'll go ahead and create this VPC. You're gonna see it's gonna create a bunch of stuff for us. So how would we have to prepare this for IPv6? Well, the first thing is we would need to add a CIDR range for um, IPv6. So I'm gonna go over here and we'll add a new IPv CIDR range. And I'm gonna allow it to allocate from Amazon provided. And so now we have IPv6. I don't think you can add multiples or you shouldn't be able to, but we'll try it anyway. Apparently you can. <laughs> <laughs> but we only really need one, so we'll go ahead and do that. Notice that it now has an IPv6 range here, so that is really good. The next thing is we'll need to update the routes table, so we'll go here. We'll give this a refresh. We'll find our new routes table, which is over here. I guess we must have forgot to tell it not to make a private subnet, which is totally fine. But what we can do is go to our routes, and we'd have to edit our routes and make sure that we have um, an IP address for local IPv6 over to our internet gateway. So we'll go ahead and select this and create it. So that's part one. Um, the other thing is our subnets. Our subnets might need some configuration in order to support them. Generally, it, I, at one point they said like you could only have it IPv4, IPv6, but let's go take a look here and see edit IPv6 addresses. So I'm gonna go ahead, ahead and add an IPv6 CIDR block. And we'll go head down and, well, this is VPC details. Was I editing the VPC or the subnet? IPv6, yes. Well, it says it's on, under the subnet. So we'll add it here. I'm going to go down one so we're not using up all of them. And supposedly, that's all we had to do. Notice DNS64 is not turned on. That's something else that you might be interested in. But the idea is that you, if you uh, need to turn off IPv4, I think you'd have to create a new one. So, And also, you might want to auto-assign the IPv6. And we could uh, enable that there. Enable DNS64 to allow IPv6 only services into the VPC to communicate, uh, to communicate with IPv4 only services. So I guess it doesn't necessarily mean that everything has to be IP IPv4 in order to turn that on, but uh, that's an option that we might want to want to do. And that's pretty much it. So, um, yep, we'll go ahead and just delete our VPC. In practicality, working with IPv6 is extremely difficult. I am not from a networking background, so I'm not the best person to show that, but I know enough that we could conf configure that. And if I really wanted to, I could spend hours fiddling with IPv6, but you know, I think that uh, AWS just does not have a good offering for IPv6 um, at this time, and I just generally would not recommend it, and even networking folks complain about it. So there you go. Okay, ciao.